The topic that we are going to look at today is a very much in line with the context of the day. This week we uh, mem uh, remember the soldiers, the army men, the navy, the air force and all the uh, ones who uh, fought for the country and uh, some of them even laid down their lives. So that's why it's called a memorial day, okay, as you all know that. <clears throat> so here, today I want to talk to you about what these uh, people have done for us and at the same time we want to talk about a person greater than all the ones that who laid down their lives okay so let's uh, 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 look at a verse that say uh, in Proverbs 18 and 16 Proverbs 18 16 the first part says a gift opens the way for the giver a gift opens the way for the giver now what the soldiers have done for us is they have uh, you see for any country the soldiers uh, they risk their lives and then they uh, fight the enemies and protect the people uh, so therefore uh, John 15 and verse 13 as we all know says greater love has no one than this then he lay down his life for his friends. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. So therefore here you find that a person who loves will show it in action. Here you find greater love has no one than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. So we have seen that some people have laid down their lives for the citizens. Here we see another very very great person in the Bible that is Jesus Christ who also laid down his life for us. Now so on any occasion what we do is we give gifts is it not? We give gifts. There's a birthday. Yesterday we went for a birthday party. So you go for an occasion you'll give a gift. So today what we're going to do is, we're going to see Jesus Christ, or God giving a gift to the people, to the mankind, and how that gift is different from the way we give gifts. Okay? Now, usually there'll be, there'll be uh, uh, several points so I want you to remember them number one the first point you must remember is you don't give gifts to a person just uh, without any occasion is it not you'd give a gift only when there is an occasion and usually you give a gift on a happy occasion on a happy occasion birthday weddings and right you usually give gifts on a happy occasion God also gave a gift to the mankind. What is that gift? Romans 6, 23. What does it say? We all know this, right? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. It is a gift of God. God gave us a gift and that gift is eternal life. And Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. In Acts chapter 1, uh, Luke writes this and says, Wait for the gift. Verse 4, 1, 4. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. Who is this gift? It's the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Nothing but. After Jesus Christ went, he came and started dwelling in the hearts of the people. And that's what is called the Holy Spirit. So that is the gift that he's talking about. So on what occasion did God give the gift to the human beings? Do you get it? We give gifts to people when there is a happy occasion. What was the occasion when God gave the gifts to the people? Psalm 52 Psalm 52 2 and 3 tells you the occasion. Psalm 52, 2 and 3, here is the occasion. Uh, 
53, chapter 53, verse 2 and 3. God looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. This is the occasion when God is giving the gift. So I want you to compare the gifts that we give and the gift that God gave to the people. So we give a gift when we are when there's an occasion, there's a happy occasion, a graduation, a birthday, a wedding, or whatever. But God gave a gift at the time when the people, they turned away from Him. When they altogether became corrupt. When they're not good, not even one. Can you tell me something? A situation where there's not even one person who is good in the whole world. Not even one. You find a very similar statement that God talks about the people of Jeremiah, uh, people of Israel through Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 1. Go up and down the streets of Jerusalem, look around the, and con consider, search through his squares. If you can find but one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. One person. So that is the depravity of man. And in that point, God said, I want to give you a gift. I want to give you a gift when you fail in your exam. Have you ever seen that? You fail in your exam, God says, I'll give you a gift. Usually as parents, we promise gifts to our children when they succeed. I do that. If my kids get straight A's, I tell them, okay, you get whatever you want. If they don't get straight A's, I've denied uh, gifts to them. I said, no, you don't deserve it. But our God is not like that. Our God is a God, when He saw we were altogether corrupt, we were wicked, turned away from Him, not even good, not good, not even one person good. God said, I have a gift for you guys. The second thing we must remember is, first one is the occasion. Number two, in our case, the giver is different from the gift, is it not? We are the giver and gift is something else you go to Walmart you go to Toys R Us you go to some place and then you buy something and give a gift to a person now look at what God did Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 says for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace for to us a child is born and to us a son is given. Who is it talking about? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. John says the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. John 1.1 1, 1 says in the beginning was word. The word was with God and the word was and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst. So in this case the giver and the gift both are same. In our case, the giver is different, the gift is different. In the case of God, He gave Himself. Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, with, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. It says, He gave himself for me Ephesians 1 uh, 3 and 4 grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us who gave himself when you say he gave himself the giver and the gift both are the same persons the third thing that we need to remember is when we give a gift to somebody we spend a little amount and we then give a gift now how much do you spend to give a gift let's be practical how much do you spend now do you spend your entire salary to give a gift even the richest person I mean you find rich people giving gifts to one another suppose somebody gives you an Audi car or a Bentley car or Rolls Royce I tell you I can bet the person whoever is giving you the gift 
has much more left with him than what he is giving to the person as a gift. The cost of the gift is, will be much less than what the giver still retains with him. But let's say for example somebody, has, somebody gets a salary of say, say $5,000 a month. Okay? So he might give a gift to somebody worth how much? Say 500, let's say. 500, 700. Have you ever seen somebody who gets a salary of $5,000 give a gift of $5,000? It's difficult. You will rarely find. What did Jesus Christ do? What did God do? What kind of gift did he give us? 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. Chapter 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Through his poverty you might become rich. Romans chapter 8 and verse 32 says, Romans 8 and 32, Paul writes here and says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How much? All. all. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. So can you imagine God giving himself up for you and me? So when we give a gift to somebody, a lot is left with us usually. But in the case of God, what did he do? He was rich, but he became poor for our sake, so that we through his poverty might become rich. And then Romans 8.32 says, He gave us all. He gave him up for us all. Philippians. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, Paul writes, it says, But made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So how much is, uh, uh, how much is the cost? Is it 10% of your salary? What God said, okay, I have all this so... Come on, he gave himself for us totally. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only portion of his son. No. He gave his only son. He gave his only son. He gave him up for us. And that's the kind of gift that he gave to you and me. And therefore we understand that when the giver and the gift is the same, in our case, the giver is different, the gift is different. Does it mean, what does it mean? When you give, buy a gift, let's, let's take a look at this. You, you buy a gift. Now when you buy a gift and you have it with you, okay, till you go for that party, till you go and send it to that person, you have that ownership, is it not? You have that ownership. You spent money, you went to the store, you bought a gift, and you still have it with you. So you are the owner. But once you give it to the person, what happens? Once you give it to the person, what happens there? There is a transfer of ownership. It's a transfer of ownership. And therefore, we understand that Isaiah 9, 6, the same verse that we read tells you, For unto us a son is born, to us a son is given. He is given to us. What does it mean? God saying, hey, Jesus is yours. God saying, I am yours. And that's what the uh, Song of Solomon says, I am his and he is mine. And this is the wonderful song that you find where he says, uh, I belong to my lover and his desire is for me. I am my lover's and my lover is mine. He browses among the lilies. Okay, so many places you find he is mine. Say, look at, look at uh, Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 16. My lover is mine and I am his. My lover is mine and I am his. That's what the, uh, 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 the wise man Solomon writes about his you know the beloved is talking. My lover is mine. So when God gave Jesus to us, he did not give to us for a temporary period. He said only from this time to this time he is going to be there with you. 
It's not a babysitting time hours. He said, he's yours. He's yours. All right. The next thing we need to remember is when you give a gift to a person, what kind of gift you give to a person depends on the intimacy that you have with that person. Yes or no? If you know a person very well, and he's a very good friend, very close friend, you know what he needs. You know what he lacks. I tell you, when you buy gifts for your kids or for gifts for people, this, there must be a lot of thinking which happens behind. Or maybe a discussion, what should we buy him? What should we buy him? What should we buy this person? And somebody might say, hey, he likes this. Or they might say, uh, I didn't find this in his house. I don't think he has it, so let's buy it for him. I've seen this many times. The kid has a good musical talent. The very good musical talent. And somebody in the, uh, that kid has a birthday. And somebody in the family gets him. Suppose he likes to play guitar. So he, every time he borrows a guitar from somebody to play in a, a, a program. You know what will happen? Somebody who is very close to the family would know and say, This boy, I think he needs a guitar. Every time he borrows from somebody. That talks about the intimacy that the person has with this family, with this child. And he'd give you that gift and say, Hey, I know that you need this. That intimacy is there between God and man, even though man was apart from God because of sin. And God knew what we needed. God knew what we needed. Let's look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Verse 6. You see, just at the right time, you see, you see, just at the right time, when we were all still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. He died for the ungodly. Verse 8. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 10. For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. So we were his, uh, we were his enemies, we were sinners, we were ungodly. That is the time the Bible says, just at the right time. Just at the right time, God gave a son, Jesus Christ, to the people for him to be killed on the cross. Now the, and, uh, another important thing is the relationship between the giver and the uh, receiver. What's the relationship with, uh, between the giver and the receiver? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever given a gift to your enemy? No. Why would you pay? Why would you spend money for your enemy? You would not. I've seen people send gifts to the enemies and put what? Explosives inside. <laughs> And say, hey, this is a gift from me. And then you open it and then, you know, it blows up and then kills that family. I mean, it, there's no real heartfelt positive attitude in giving. Nobody will give a gift to an enemy. You would give a gift to a person when you are good with them. But Jesus, God, he gave a gift to the people when the relationship was sour. When people were his enemies, they were sinners, then God said, okay, I need to give you a gift at this time. So that's the relationship between, uh, that's the kind of relationship between the giver and the gift. See, Galatians 4, 4 and 5 says, But when the time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law. What do you mean by redeem? What do you mean by redeem? We have seen, we see this word many times. We see this word many times. Pay a ransom. Pay a ransom and free that person. You have seen when people are kidnapped. What do they do? They demand and say, give me a million dollars and then I'll release your child. What happens? You pay that entire amount 
and say, take this million dollars and give me my son, give me my daughter. And God did what? He paid the price when the relationship was sour. Okay, the next thing that we remember is nobody who buys a gift and gives it to the person will try to uh, manhandle the gift. You be very careful in giving the gift. You'll put a, a, a decorative paper on that, maybe a bow, maybe you know a lot of uh, decoration on it. And uh, usually we take uh, a gift bag, put some uh, you know papers in it, and then decorate it beautifully. And that's how you present the gift to the person. And when you receive, when the other person receives the gift, or when you receive the gift, you be very careful. You might tear open the box, but you be very careful with what the present was. Some people have gifts with, uh, uh, kept with them for years and years. They've cherished those uh, gifts. God gave His Son Jesus Christ as a gift to the people. What did the people do to Him? They manhandled that gift. Philippians 2, 7, just as we read, says, they even killed Him on the cross. When Peter stood up and spoke on the day of Pentecost, and this is what he said, you men of Galilee, you men of, uh, you men, you have killed men of Israel. Verse 22, 2, 22. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by mirac miracles and wonders and signs, which God did amongst you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed to you over by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you with the help of wicked men put him to death by nailing him to the cross. Would you do something like this to the uh, gift? Somebody gives you a gift, yeah? A teddy bear, for example. Somebody gives you a teddy bear. Would you take a knife and cut it open and then tear it off? No. You cherish it. You'll keep it. You'll protect it. This is what happened to the gift that God gave. Jesus was given as a gift to you and me. But he was nailed to the cross. He was killed on that cross. Okay. The next thing that we need to remember is... The gift that we give to uh, the other people or the gift that we receive has a corruptible nature. One day it will perish, is it not? Even if you protect it so well, it will perish one day. What about Jesus Christ? What about Jesus Christ? Now, what is the, what is the worst way of perishing? What is the worst way of perishing? Dying. Right? The worst way of perishing is dying cease to exist what did what happened when jesus died peter's in the same context in chapter 2